So now we're inside the house, and this is the passive solar house. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about what's going on in here from a uh, architectural standpoint, I guess. Uh, this room is it's about 8 feet deep and 20 feet long, and it's got a poured slab floor, concrete. It's also got a poured wall painted a dark color. So this, this particular type of passive solar construction, this would be high mass passive solar. So the concrete is the mass. Uh, it, it, this house, if you were to take this house and put it on a scale next to a conventionally built stick frame house, uh, it would weigh probably three times more. And that's because of this, all this concrete in here. And what this concrete does is it, it gives us kind of a, a buffer, uh, a thermal buffer. We're able to store heat in this concrete. This, this concrete has a certain amount of BTUs it can store. So we, we, we're able to store the sun's heat in the concrete, in the solar mass, this is what you call it, uh, in the winter time, and it's basically going to absorb any heat so it works just as good in the summertime when the heat comes into the house. Why this is the coolest room in the house because the concrete's absorbing the heat. Well, in the winter time, when we want all the heat, the sun's rays come in, they heat up the mass, and we're able to store heat in here and keep this house warm. Now. We'll show some shots in a minute of what the exterior of the house looks like and you'll be able to see just how many windows we have on the south side of the house. Uh, the percentage of windows on the house in relationship to the square footage of the actual floor area of the house is, is a pretty large ratio. If you don't have solar mass in a house, then the, the ratio, it needs, the windows need to be about 8% of the square footage of the house. When you do have a solar mass, you can put a lot more windows in because you're able to absorb the heat. If this, if this uh, concrete mass wasn't in this house, it'd be too hot in this room for me to even be in here comfortably because it would just be heating the air and all the, all the, all the, the energy that was coming in that wouldn't have any place to be absorbed by. But because we have this thermal mass, it gets absorbed and then at night when the sun goes down, we close the curtains and this mass is going to radiate the heat. So it, it's, a, it's a different way of thinking about energy storage because most people think about it in, in, you know, when you storage energy, we're storing batteries, but another way to store energy is just to raise the temperature of something really, really heavy. Uh, concrete's a really good material because it's, it's structural and you can build with it, but you can also uh, store a lot of heat in it. That's what this room is. This is a heat storage room. It's the, this is the, the passive solar room. Another thing you're going to see about this room is uh, it's lower than the rest of the house. And we do that so that we can get a natural thermosiphon going. When this house was originally built, uh, this room was two stories and it had windows at the top too. And the heat was allowed to thermosiphon up out of the top of the house and go into the, the other parts of the house and then, as well as thermosiphoning up into um, the, the rest of the living area. Uh, they found it was too loud. The house was way too loud when this was a two-story room, and so they actually closed it in and you know cut about half of the solar off, but it still heats great. This is a 2,000 square foot house in Georgia. Uh, power bills, uh, they average out about $150 a month, which is pretty good for a house built in the 90s that's you know got windows from the 90s. Doesn't have any active solar, no, no, no solar thermal, no PV. It's all passive. It's all opening and closing curtains. And you know, once again, I said uh, the temperature outside. Uh, on my cell phone, it's about 30 degrees, and you know, on January 22nd, 2014, you look that up if you don't believe me. But uh, you see how good a passive solar house works, and it's it's a very simple technology. But you need to you know get there in the upfront cost and go ahead and incorporate your solar mass in early on. The the floors are four inches thick. They're poured concrete, and it's a floating slab, and so it's not in direct connection with the um, uh, with, the, with the dirt. The floors aren't directly connected to the dirt. They're not sitting on the dirt. And if they were, then they'd be conducting the heat out into the you know, ground. Even if the ground's 55 degrees, we want it to be like 72 in here because we're humans. We like that temperature. And then these walls, you can see how thick this wall is right here. This is, uh, I think this is like an 8 inch thick board. It's a block wall, fill block wall. It goes up two stories um, and, and it's going to absorb a lot of heat. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you outside and I'm going to show you uh, the whole south side of the house so that you can see all the windows and you can see 
uh, the overhang geometry because that's another thing we do because with passive solar design it's not just about heating it's about cooling as well it's about lowering your cooling bills and um, that's another thing you got to remember with this is this this is cool in the summertime and this is going to absorb the heat that comes into the house in the summertime too which is going to make it cooler this house is coolest coolest room in the summertime and it's the warmest room in the wintertime that's what's great about passive solar it's what makes it really it, may, it doesn't just make your energy bills go down and have, let you live in a house that's overall cheaper to live in. It also um, raises your quality of life because your structure is more comfortable. This house is more comfortable. Another feature, just pulling them out all out now, I'm trying to remember everything. Um, this house is built on six inch two by four walls or two by six walls. Most conventional construction you see houses they get built on two by fours. Exterior walls are four inches thick. Uh, with some sheeting and some, uh, you can usually fit about R19 insulation in there. These are six inch walls, so that, you know, gives you a thicker cavity for a little bit more money. You get a thicker wall cavity, but you get the energy savings of a, uh, you can get, you know, I think you can get an R21, or if you do spray foam or some other kind of insulation, you can get even, even higher values. This house was built in the 90s. It was designed by North Carolina Solar Center, and uh, it was the biggest house they had at that time. But you can see how this is. This would be easy to add one of these on or enclose. There's all kinds of ideas you could come up with on how to retrofit this onto an existing structure or you know, get you some ideas on how to incorporate passive solar technology. Dollar for dollar, you know, dollar per, per unit of energy saved, passive solar technology is going to be your cheapest uh, solar. Uh, you're going to save more money and you're going to spend less money up front and save more money with passive solar, which is it's basically just really beefed up insulation and a smart way to do it. And then we got the wood stove in here. Can't not talk about the wood stove because we all, you know, you think about the wood stove. The, the wood stove burns wood, but wood is just stored solar energy. So uh, this is this is actually, I, I count this as solar technology too. And this thing works really great. If it's uh, real cloudy outside, really cold, or nighttime, we need a little extra heat, we can burn the wood burner and um, because we have this long section of pipe next to the concrete mass, we can suck up most of the heat that would go out of this pipe into this mass and basically charge this mass up. We've got another way to charge it up with heat, store all the heat from the wood stove in here, and that's just a, a, another way to heat this house. So it's also really good backup heat. I mean, like I said, the heat pumps aren't running today. Um, it's 30 degrees outside, and it's, uh, what's the temperature inside now? We got, yeah, so we're at, we're at 70 degrees inside. Okay, so now we're outside on this cold January day, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this passive solar house and how it works, and you're going to really be able to see these features from the outside better than on the inside. Um, the, the first thing I want to show you is just look at how many windows we have on the south side of the house. Uh, we wouldn't be able to put these many, this many windows on the house if we didn't have the solar mass in there. If there was no solar mass and there wasn't thousands and thousands of pounds of concrete inside the house, it would be, the heat would be intolerable right now. But because we have the solar mass, you can start to really put this many windows on a house to where it almost looks like a greenhouse or something on the front. This house, you know, when, when my, my, my dad and my stepmom were trying to decide about how they wanted this house to look, they wanted it to look somewhat conventional and traditional looking and so this is a fairly traditional looking house this is the solar part of the house from the front you would never be able to tell it was solar so what we have here to keep the house from overheating is uh, if you look at the between the first and the second story of the house there's kind of a weird porch looking thing above the porch. That's actually a drop in trellis system where we can drop in shade panels in the summertime and cut the solar off. If you think about the way the sun is in the winter and summer, the angle of the sun is, uh, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's a lot lower in the wintertime uh, versus in the summertime. So if here's the house, you know, the angle of the sun is like this in the wintertime, but in the summertime it's directly overhead. So we want to, uh, we want to keep the heat from coming into the house in the summer so we we shade it as much as we can if you look up you notice that the where the soffit is where the overhang of the roof is it actually comes out a lot farther than you see on most houses most houses it might go out 9 12 18 inches but where the 
where the roof and the gutter come out, if you look at that point, it, it's almost two, two and a half, three feet. That's another uh, overhang protection. What we call that is overhang geometry. And you gotta have good overhang geometry or some kind of a modular drop-in shading system so that you can shade your house and the passive solar doesn't work against you in the summertime when you're trying to cool. So what we're able to do is just you know, uh, twice a year in the beginning of the summer and the end of the summer, we, we get up and we either drop in or uh, pull the shades and we're able to shade that whole porch off and keep the sun from coming inside the house. So we mitigate the solar gain in the summertime. It's, it's kind of like um, a manual control for it. And they get more advanced. Some houses have it automated. Some houses have the overhang uh, s designed so well that, you know, at a certain time of the year, let's say March, it starts to completely shade the windows and that's another way to do it but this is a surefire way to do it and this is also a way to retrofit your house if you're getting too much sun in the summertime um, and your air conditioner bill is going up well then you need to mitigate the solar gain you need to lessen the amount of solar gain you're getting in your house uh, you know a drop-in shade trellis system like that is going to be the way to do it so you've got a lot of things going on solar mass lots of windows um, uh, a way to shade it, turn it on, turn it off. A uh, lot of stuff going on with the passive solar house. So you, you know, it's a different way of living, but you end up saving a lot more money. It's a lot smarter of a design. And I wanted to mention uh, passive solar technology. You know, it's not something that just came out. In ancient Rome, there were uh, building laws about where you could build your house, whether you could block the sunlight of somebody else's lot. So there were actually solar right away laws in ancient Rome. This is ancient technology we're just we're just using it again if you're looking at if you're looking at this on paper and you're about to build a new house or retrofit your house and you're trying to figure out like how can i get solar on my house and you're looking at the cost of putting you know pv solar electric panels on your house or putting a solar thermal system on your house or incorporating some kind of passive solar into your house you're going to get way more energy into your house and you're going to have a way more efficient technology that's going to be maintenance free uh, for way cheaper with passive solar. So that's the first way that you need to try to get solar into your house.